Welcome back to Nevada Realtors Today, your place for timely updates on the news and trends that matter to realtors in the Silver State. Now let's join your Nevada Realtors President, Brandon Roberts, and Nevada Realtors CEO, Tiffany Banks, for today's episode of Nevada Realtors Today. So welcome to the Nevada Realtors Today, the official podcast of Nevada Realtors. So timely updates on news and trends that matter most to those in our industry. So I'm your host, Tiffany Banks, Association CEO, and I'm here with Brandon Roberts, my amazing co-host, president of the association. How are you doing today, Brandon? I'm doing fantastic, Tiffany. How are you? Great. Uh, so I'm super excited about our first podcast. This is, this is going to be awesome. I am too. So we, this is unscripted. So we are just going to talk about why, why are we doing this? Why is it important to start a podcast um, and get this information out to our members? I think it's it's a, a neat thing. Like we started the um, our industry forward pack where we started meeting with a lot of the the brokers uh, around the state and talking about the changes that were happening from the NAR settlement and some of their concerns and questions. And one of the things they they really wanted from from us as a state association was better communication or communication on. Uh, things that can help them in their business and help them with their agents. And so as we got talking, we thought there's a lot of ways people communicate. They communicate through email, um, obviously through text and all kinds of other methods. But one of the the really neat um, things that have come over the years and really taken off is podcasts. And so we thought this would be a great format to be able to to put things out and record it that people can always go back to and know where to find them. I agree. And I think, you know, you think about getting out timely information. We obviously send out our e-news every week. We're posting on social media, but actually having a podcast in somewhere that we can give timely information to the members and they can share um, with other members or even the consumer. Because I think a lot of what we do on a daily basis is not just for the member, but it's actually to help them do business better and serve the consumer. And, and I know we've thrown around the word transparency so much, um, even even recently. But what does transparency to you, transparency for a consumer, really mean? I think it's it's communication. I think the more people know, the better they feel, and the easier things are. I think if there's not a lot of communication, people start to think in their head there's something else going on. Or what are they hiding from me or or different things like that? And so this is a a great format to do that. We'll have guests from around the country, local guests. I'm excited to be able to use this podcast during legislative session um, to kind of springboard off of something that was done last year um, with, with Tom, the president, which was It's Not Soup Yet, where they talked about some of the bills and things like that. And that way... I think our members can really start to see the value of the association and what we we are doing for them behind the scenes. Yeah, I I couldn't agree more. And when you think about it's not soup yet, at some point you think about, do we really want or need the members to get into like the nitty gritty to know the day to day? But it sounds like they they want to hear that, right? Like they actually want to hear the day to day, what we do. We always say during session, don't judge us on day one or day 115 or day 120 judges on 121 after session ends. But I think that there's the desire now for more of, no, we want to hear what's happening on day two and day four, where before we just thought maybe you just want to hear the end product. Right. With the legislative update at the end. Mm-hmm. And, and, you know, this, the state's done a good job over the years of sending out the advocate, which comes out on a weekly basis through legislative and that. That goes there, but not everybody reads that. And if you're not reading what's coming out, then are we really communicating? So I think it's important we communicate in a way that is easy for more of our members to digest. Mm-hmm. But agree. the advocate's not going away. Yeah, you still have to read. We we still we have to send things right? out. Some people are visual learners. Some people yeah, you know, learn a different way. But I think also like the the word that really sticks out to me even more and more recently is authenticity. I think they want to hear the truth and I think they want to hear authentically like who we are, what we stand for, what we represent. And it brings me to the topic of you as an authentic leader, not just in stepping into this position as president of our state association and what that means and the the work that you, the heavy lift that you've had so far this year and that you have into the future, but what that means as a broker. And I know 
you know, you, you think about how long have you been in the business? So I got licensed in October of 1996. 19, so 19. whatever that t- tallies up to, I stopped counting. <laughs> okay, so more than 20 but, years uh, ago? That was more than 20 yes, years. Yes, um, yes. And so, and, you know, the, the industry has changed a lot, but there's still probably a few things that have stayed the same. What would you think would be like the top three, and maybe we could just start so start with the top one, like myth um, that an agent would have in getting into the industry. Like, what do you think they think, what would they expect versus what is the reality? But I'm, it's funny you ask that because when I got into real estate, I don't know why I chose real estate. And I was sitting in a training class, probably my first or second week. And I'm sitting there and I'm like, oh my gosh, what did I do? I'm in sales. Um, so I think a lot of people don't realize that they're getting into sales and um, that it, they're opening their own business. Yes, it's under the umbrella of a broker, um, but they need a business plan. They need to have a, a direction and they need the right information to to go through. And then then they're going to need to understand that it's, it's important to know that where the business is going to come from. Because I think the biggest myth is they think they're going to get in this, they're going to join a brokerage or a company. And they're automatically, their phone's going to start ringing. And that's not the case. There's a lot of work and heavy lifting that goes in behind that of opening and getting your business going. Sure. That's a really good point. And you think about, you know, sales is a lot of relationships, right? Like relationship building. And I don't think anybody ever likes to have to ask somebody for something, but that is what sales is, right? Like selling yourself and selling the relationship that you have with that person. Yeah. The neat thing about sales though, as, and I, I've done this as my broker, I, I never sell someone on coming to work for me. And same thing in, in doing business. I never sell somebody on why they should come. I focus on what their needs are, their wants, their desires. And as an agent, I think that's important too, because if, if you generally take a concern in what the consumer wants and you're listening, they're naturally going to be gravitated towards working with you. Um, so if they see a benefit or see the value in working with you, it's it's not a sales job. And I have many agents over the years that, that argue with me and tell me that they're not in sales because they don't want that title of salesman, salesman or saleswoman. Uh, they use car feel or whatever, but it, it doesn't have to be th- that way. And salespeople really do a good service and they help us through a lot of decisions that we need to make in our lives, whether it's buying a car, whether it's buying a house or selling your house or, or those types of things. So I think sales is an honorable profession when done properly, when you really care about the consumer and ask the right questions. And I think if you, if you take care of them, the paychecks will come. Yeah. What is the quote that you say a lot about value and money? What do you say? Yeah, uh, dollars follow value. Yes. Dollars follow value. Okay, so people what is have that no mean? problem paying for value. Okay, people have no problem problem paying for value and or a great experience. And I think that is missing more and more in today's society is the experience, the customer service experience. I think since COVID, I think things have really changed, and I think this is a great opportunity to talk to a lot of great industry leaders across the country um, and different people are doing the business to get better ideas and maybe bring back a better experience, not only for going to work every day um, in your business, but also dealing with the consumer. I think when we think about what we're doing for the association, it's it's very similar right now. It's mm-hmm. It's having a good experience for our members and even for the public, cause, because we get calls all the time from you know, the general public with a concern or a question. And, and I think it's very important here to make sure that staff answers in a way that's not just, you know, oh, we don't represent you and hang up the phone, but actually how can we connect you to a resource, even if we don't have the answer for that, but who can we connect you to that can help you? Because that's the last thing I would want is for somebody who is struggling. And usually people don't call and reach out unless they have a concern or a question over something. But how can we help guide you to get the answer that you need? So I think it's And I have to applaud applaud your leadership and the staff that you put together 
there. As I'm traveling around and I'm talking to people, it's an honor to be the the president of Nevada Realtors because of the support and the things behind there and the and the experience people are having in dealing with Nevada Realtors. Um, it's it's refreshing, and um, your your genuine concern towards the members is it comes through and it's creating a better experience for everyone when dealing with Nevada Realtors. And I think Nevada Realtors is really stepping up and, and taking their place in our in our industry. And so kudos to you and and the staff you put together. Um, I'm I'm truly blessed that I get the opportunity to come in and be president during this time. Thanks, Brandon. And I always say it's a we it's a we thing. So without, you know, your phenomenal leadership and our entire executive team. And and yeah, I can't say enough about the staff here that, again, is really forward thinking in how can we make what we do even better? Like, what are the things that the members need? And we want to hear the feedback Like we want to know if there's something that we can do better or that we need to shift with or what resources you need to be successful. We're here for it. And um, yeah, we want to provide a forum for all of that. And so Which is exciting because we're we're going to get to showcase our entire executive team and everything that we do. And that's another great uh, positive thing about this this podcast. So I'm super, super excited. Me too. And so when you think about culture and then we'll kind of go into who we expect to have on the podcast. But when you think about culture, even like culture in, in your um, in your business, like why is it important for you to create an environment for your agents to thrive? Because I see it when I go visit your office. Like, why is that important? Uh, it's the experience. I mean, if you have a good experience of coming to work, you're going to want to do it more. Um, if you dread going someplace, um, you're not going to do it. And so it's about creating an environment uh, that people want to come to work because if you come to work, good things will happen. And I've always just believed um You've got to get up every day and go to the office uh, or whether your office is at home or whatever, you've got to get up every day and go to go to your business. Mm -hmm. And so culture is important because that's where you 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 feed off of. And that's where you you get ideas and stuff like that. And so you want to be around people you, you enjoy. And did you emulate someone like that or how did you become um, grounded in that mindset? <laughs> so I. I was brought up and I've always had a work ethic. Um, I owned a, a deli at the age of 19. Um, and it it sounds like a great thing to say, hey, you you bought a restaurant or a deli when you were young. I bought it off my father and, and um, it was probably the best thing I ever did. But I think he tricked me into owning my own job and having to go to work every day. I had to be there at four o'clock in the morning to make sure that I opened those doors and I worked through the day. Um, but if I didn't show up, there was a line of people out there. And so I had people um, that wanted or that I couldn't let down. And so I built those habits over time. So I think that w I was spoiled in that regard is just kind of built into me. Hmm. And what do you think right now going into this new wave of um, our new norm of real estate? What's your, do you have one piece of advice or one takeaway um, for any of our listeners on how to be successful um, as we navigate these changing times? Embrace the change. I think this is going to make the strong um, stronger. Uh, the good agents will make more money. Um, it's an opportunity to get paid what you're worth and what you can negotiate and, and how you can demonstrate your value. And I'm excited. We've got tons of guests coming up um, really on our first one. Um, I'm really excited for the first one. I think the the uh, listeners are going to be super excited for for episode number two coming out. Thanks, Brandon. And so a little tease, <laughs> a little tease. So as we as we wrap up, what to expect on our podcast, um, and hopefully it's not just over the next several months, but in in years to come. Um, who do we plan on um, featuring? I know we've talked about having a good balance across the state. Um, not only like internal, like you said, our executive team and leaders like that, um, but elected officials and then nationwide, just hearing a different perspective of those that are on the front line in a different state or owner brokerage in another state, we can have a different perspective. But are you, what are you most excited about as far as our guests? I'm excited because um, some of the people you've told me that you've talked to already that are committing to come on. 
Um, and I don't know if you want to share their names or not, but um, I'm super excited to talk to them because we're going to talk to, to industry leaders, not only in real estate, but out of real estate, um, from big companies to small companies, um, to agents outside of our market that are doing great things. Um, so I think it's an opportunity for our listeners to really gain some insight from from other people. I mean, a lot of times we can say it till we're blue in the face or your broker can say it till they're blue in the face or your parents can, but when you hear it from somebody else, sometimes it resonates. So I don't know if you want to share some of the names of people that you think are coming, um, but but uh, I'm excited. I'm excited too. No, maybe we save it. Maybe we save it for another episode where you and I are just chatting and we can have another teaser out there. But, you know, we really, it's really important to us in creating this podcast that we have the listeners have a takeaway. We want them to have something that actually impacts their life again or their business for the better, some sort of action items for themselves to, again, like I'm going to use the word thrive, but to be, you know, to thrive and be successful in this market. And whether it's, you know, through leadership development, because you know how passionate I am about that. So we might um, bring someone on talking about leadership development all the way down to, you know, how to actually do a, buy, a buyer broker presentation to a listing presentation and everything in between. So I'm really excited um, about what what this podcast is going to offer to our members and beyond. The, the future possibilities. And it's Nevada Realtors today, and we're excited. Um, so we hope you all will join us soon. And thank you so much, Brandon, for kicking off this first episode unscripted. And um, I know we have a lot more to talk about in the future. Thanks, Tiff.